praise the Lord, everybody and everybody. Praise the Lord on this morning. Truly, the Lord is wonderful. He is good to his people. We thank God for his loving kindness, his tender mercies that are new every day. We are excited about what the Father has in store for us on today. Our scripture will come from Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5, and then verses 20 through 22. And the word says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercy, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you ministers of his, who do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Father, we thank you this morning. We give you glory and honor and praise just for another day. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you this morning for an opportunity just to pray, God, just to give your name glory, honor, and praise. For your word truly declares that the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man availeth much. And you also say in your word that where two or three are gathering your name, you shall be in the midst. So, Father, I believe right now by faith, as we pray this morning, as we set the atmosphere for worship and for for praise and for teaching and preaching of your word, God. I pray that your word come unhindered, untouched from any outside force, God. I pray that your word will bring some impact in someone's life this morning, God. I pray that change will take place on behalf of the lost, Father God. I thank you right now. We decree and declare that supernatural wonders, supernatural miracles, God. I pray that your health be phenomenal from the crown of your head to the soles of your feet. I pray right now, Joel 2 and 25, that God will restore unto you the years that the swarming locust, Father, and the chewing locust, hallelujah, and the crawling locust, and hallelujah, that, that your word declares that my people shall never be put to shame, but my people shall be satisfied. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus that we are a people that we're going to be satisfied, God, and we shall never be put to shame, Father. We thank you for the power of your word, God, for your word has power, hallelujah, Father God, to drive out demons. Your word has power to dry up sickness. Your word has power to deliver, to deliver, hallelujah, the sick. Your word has power to deliver the brokenhearted. So we thank you right now, God, for the living power of your word, God. And as we decree and as we declare this morning, God, that we are armed and we are dangerous and we are courageous about your word, God. I know that you're going to do the impossible, God. I feel it even right now in my spirit, God. Hallelujah, that all things are possible to him that believes, God. So we decree and declare by faith, God. You said in your word, God, that heaven and earth shall pass away to one jot or one tittle of your word shall fail. So, Lord, we thank you now, God, that you are the lifter of our head. You are the lifter of our soul, God. And we tell you, thank you this morning, God, that we are not a broke down people, God. That we are a people, Father God, that are strong, God. And we shall carry out great exploits, God. We are the seeds of Abraham. And we are heirs according to the promise. We decree and we declare that all nations of the earth shall be blessed. And we give your name the glory, Jesus. We give your name the power to praise, Jesus. You are worthy to be praised. Now I dare every blood washed believer to open up your mouth and begin to give the Lord some praise in this house. Wherever you're at in your home, come on, open your mouth wide and let the Lord fill it. God, we give you glory. God, we give you praise. God, we give you honor. We set the atmosphere all across the nation. We set the atmosphere that anything is possible. Anything can happen. Thank you right now, Jesus, that my body is a temple of the Holy Ghost and can't no unclean thing dwell in my body. I got Genesis 6 and 3. I shall live 120 years. God, we give you glory, Jesus. And we tell you, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody just bless him. Somebody just bless him. 
bless her, come on. Somebody bless her, bless her. Come on, somebody bless her, bless her. Lord, have your way in this place this morning. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory this morning. Father, we know you're going to get all glory this morning, get all praise. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout glory. I need somebody to shout hallelujah. Come on, right in your home, shout glory. Isn't the Lord amazing? Come on. Isn't the Lord wonderful? Father, you woke me up this morning and started you on my way, and we give you praise, and we give you glory. Come on, clap your hands this morning. Hey. We will call upon you this morning, God. Yeah. We give you glory. Y'all ready this morning to go to work? Real loud. Have your hands. 
Aren't you grateful this morning? Bobby Hart! When I look over my life and all he's brought me through, I'm only here by the grace of God. I'm only here because he's sovereign. Somebody shout right there all over the street. Touch the light. I need you to shout it right there. Let's do it again. Whoa! Everybody say, Lord over my 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 church, Lord over my children, Lord over my marriage, Lord over my Lord over my Lord over my life. So everybody say, Lord over my life. Is he Lord? Look at your neighbor real quick. Say, Is he Lord? Go ahead, it's okay to ask him. Come on, look at your neighbor. Say, Is he Lord? Say, is he savior? Come on, somebody give him praise right there. He's worthy. Come on. Come on. Give him praise right there. I still feel a praise in this atmosphere. You may need to move your seat. You may need to get familiar. Get from around the unfamiliar. Get from around the comfortable. And somebody give him praise. Somebody give him glory. Thank you. 
But the Lord says, don't fear in these times we live in. Because I will be your song. All we have to do is sing this one and say, sing, sing. My water's coming. Water is coming to, the to every dry place in your life. Come on. I know what it looks like, but the Lord says, draw from me. Oh, oh, oh. Somebody draw from the well this morning. There's a good water for you. Yeah. Oh, oh. Let's sing the word of the Lord this morning. Say. This is the word, say, this is the word of the Lord, your He says, I stand from age to age, say, I stand from age to The ancient of days. The ancient of days. He says, I am the Holy One. Come on, say, I am the Holy One. I am the Holy One. The fairest of 10,000. He's a fair God. He said, and those who call by my name, say, my name shall be saved. Come on, we'll cover this morning. Say, don't fear, say, don't fear. Hey, I will be your son.
come in unison say I will say I will provide come on everybody say I will provide Come on, just sing the word of the Lord. I will provide, say, I will provide. Yeah, I will say, come on, say, he will provide, say, he will provide. He's a well of living water, say, he will provide. He's a well of living water, say. Sunday service at 9.30 a.m., both on Facebook Live and YouTube. Greater Works family, the building project is just a few months away from being completed. Let's continue to pray for our leaders and keep this project lifted up. It's all about a legacy that will impact generations to come. We want to congratulate our 2021 graduates. We are so excited for all God has in store for you all. If you are a member of Greater Works and have graduated from high school or college this year, Please send us your name and a graduation picture to info at greaterworksfamily.com. We celebrate you. Your Giving Weekly makes an impact on thousands receiving hope, encouragement, and faith. And for that, we thank you. Here are a few ways to give and come into alignment with the vision here at Greater Works. Remember, the gifts that leave your hands never leave your lives. Don't forget to stay connected with us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you would like to receive text message notifications, please be sure to sign up to stay up to date on all that's going on here at Greater Works. We pray these online services have been a blessing to you and your families. If you have a prayer request, want more information about the ministry, or want to partner with us here at Greater Works, visit us at greaterworksfamily.com. We can't wait to hear from you. God bless you. Dios te bendiga. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's give God praise. Those that are watching, please, I mean, God is truly worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy of glory. And he is worthy of honor, as I always say. Who would not serve a God like our God? Because God truly is good to his people. Mother Great often says that he's great. And truly he is. He's greatly to be praised. And that's why we thank him for the opportunities, again, that he has given unto all of us to give him worship, to give him praise that he is due because I'm telling you in a day and hour that we're living in now just to have life and just to have health and just to be able to breathe is enough to give God thanks for right there. If you're able to give God praise even in your home, those that are in the sanctuary this morning with me, come on, put those hands together. I know we just got out of praise. I know we just got out of praise. And I know you're watching, but keep giving God praise. Keep giving God glory. Keep giving 
giving God honor. Hallelujah. They was said if I had 10,000 tongues, I pray. So the one that you have, open up your mouth again and give him praise. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. My God. Love the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for this day. We glorify your name. We lift you up. We magnify you for your name alone is worthy to be praised. Thank you for the opportunity again that you've allowed us, God, to stand here in this place and to share the good news of the word of faith to your people. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you have done. Thank you for the things that you've kept us uh, being hurt and causing harm to come to our lives. We thank you, Lord, because you're the one that's been watching over us. You're the one that's been protected and keeping us. Lord, we thank you. There's a lot of things I can see. There's a lot of things that have taken place. Oh God, I choose to give you glory for where you have us at at this moment in our life. When we look back over our life and see where you brought us from, and we look at another year that you've allowed us to see, not just 2021, but a year of this ministry, 25 years of this ministry, truly the good hand of the Lord, you has been upon it. Your hand has been upon this ministry. And that's why, as David said, my soul boasts in you, my soul don't boast in how eloquent, my soul don't boast in how well we all speak and sing, but my soul boasts in you for the great and awesome things that you have done for us. And as I move flesh again out the way, let no flesh again glory, but you get all the glory, and you get all the honor, and you get all the praise. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. Put those hands together, let's give the Lord praise again, hallelujah. Let me first thank God for so many of our young people that has graduated from college. And this week has been a great week for some families in our ministry and even to some that maybe not a part of this ministry, but I know you are celebrating with your, your loved ones who have graduated from college and, and the great things that are about to take place for their lives. And not only that, but those that are about to graduate from high school, especially in these next couple of days here in Brunswick, Georgia, Brunswick High, Glen Academy, Frederick Academy, those areas, those high schools here. And I just send nothing but, nothing but blessings and blessings and blessings and blessings and favor and favor upon their lives that God has nothing. My word is again, has nothing but great things in store for their life. And I know he does. And that's why we should give him glory and we should give him honor for all of those young people that have walked across the stage. I want to thank God so much for my niece, Rhonda. She walked across the stage a few days ago. Hallelujah, with her degree. Hallelujah. Shahad Smith, he walked across the, come on somebody, glory to God. Hallelujah. I was traveling yesterday. I had to go to a service, an ordination service uh, for a very close friend of mine who's the day he's a deacon in the Lord's house. And one young man was at that service and he said to me, he said, uh, Pastor Baker, he said, do you know Shahad Smith? I said, yes. He said, well, I go to the school that he graduated from and, and he's so inspiring to me. And that was Elder Kenny Kurtz's son. And I say, well, he's such a person that inspires people. So Shahad, I thank God so much for his, his life that he lived there on the campus of Georgia Southern, right? Hallelujah. There on that campus, he lived a great life before other young boys. That's him back there, ain't it? Stand up, Shahar, stand up. <laughs> That's him back there. Come on, let's give God praise for him. Hallelujah. I tell you, I was so blessed yesterday. I was so blessed yesterday just to hear another young man who is in his second year of school, but Shahai has been a great inspiration to his life. And it, it made me feel so good to know that again, he didn't just live his life here, but he took the same life that he lived here on the campus there at Georgia Southern. And so that's a blessing from the Lord right there. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord praise. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, listen, let's go into the word. Uh, we're celebrating still. We're going to celebrate all year long, 25 years of our ministry. Come on, 25 years of ministry. That ain't 25 days. <laughs> I tell people all the time, that's not 25 days. That's consistent of 
building and developing and shaping the minds of God's people. I do know there are many people, you're ready to get back to the house of God. I'm ready for you to get back to the house of God. We're doing everything prayerfully how we're going to make sure we can bring about much accommodation for so many of the saints. I hear you. I hear you. I get your <laughs> messages. I really do. So I'm doing everything in my power. Well, one great thing about it, we're going to have a building completed in the next three, four months from now. <laughs> Glory to God. So we can't get everybody in this sanctuary. We'll be able to get everybody over in the new building. Come on, let's give God praise for our new building. Amen. Hallelujah. We got enough room that we'll be able to put people however it's going to take us to do what we need to do. Now, let me go into this word of faith this morning because I've been talking to you and I've been sharing this with you and it, it won't leave me at this moment. Life built on faith. And I want to make sure, I know some people tell me all the time that is that all we have to talk about is faith? No, I mean, we could talk about a lot of other things, but it's just having to be uh, faithful to the assignment that has been given to myself in this ministry uh, the continually, the Lord spoke this to me 25 years ago. He said, I'm raising you up to cause my people to believe again. And that's something that I have had to be very faithful to uh, since 1996 uh, because it wasn't uh, a desire per se of mine. I tell people that all the time as I was preparing to come to church this morning, uh, this was not a desire. And I'm not saying it uh, because I want to tell people, yeah, this is something, even though my mom and dad, I'm so thankful for the both of them uh, raising my sister and I in the Lord's house, uh, but it wasn't just a desire of mine to be a pastor. Uh, other things that I wanted to do in life, you know, entrepreneurship, business-wise, in which I do have a part of that in me, uh, but more than anything, uh, an attorney or something like that, probably uh, what I really probably wish, but this was the way of God. So he took my life through different channels uh, till we got to this place where we arrived at to be able to pastor uh, and, and, and lead people. So it never was a desire uh, for me to do this. I always talk, often tell people it was a conviction. You know, I didn't, I did not have a lot of people to per se inspire me because I only had a few people that, you know, the way I was raised in the church, in the Lord's house, uh, I had Bishop W.L. Johnson as my pastor and we might've had the senior bishop of the first born church at that time, Bishop Henry Joseph Eccles. Uh, so those was my like my mentors, my spiritual fathers, uh, as well as my biological father who made a great impact on my life uh, to make me want to be able to become a man and be the things that God per se called me to uh, do in life. So when I talk about visions and when I talk about building your life and your purpose, please everybody get this because this is, it's, I know I'm constantly giving you it for the past uh, three or four weeks now, but life uh, uh, should be built and your purpose should be built around having faith in God not just in people, not just in a system, not just in your job, not just in your career, but you want to have a life built on having faith in God. Now, you want to win in life, build your life around having faith in God. And make sure you get that. I know it's, 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 it sounds simple, but I'm, I'm, I'm telling you that life should be built. Your life and your purpose should be built around having faith in God. And when I say your life, that means in every area of your life now, because we all gonna be challenging life in every area of our life. I mean, every area of your life. I'm not just talking about success now, having faith in God for your success. I'm not just talking about having faith just for your vision. I'm talking about even when you go through a storm in life, you gotta have faith that God's gonna bring you through that storm. When you go through a test in life, you have to have faith that God's going to bring you through it. If you deal with any type of sickness, if you deal with anything that pertains to your life that you have to live 365 days a year, you're going to have to build your life and you have to build your purpose around having faith in God. Now that is, 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 is just it's in me to get that over to the body of Christ right now. So I want you to just grab hold on that because that's, that's so, so important for me to get this over to you because I do believe more than anything, it's the only thing that pleases God. Faith is the only thing that pleases God. Now, I can give you all the scriptures that you all know that I love to teach and preach from. Uh, and I, it's not on my notes right now, but I can give you that Hebrews 11 and verse number six. And I'm so thankful for that verse number six because it has helped develop my life. Okay. Faith, all it does is develop your life. Okay. That's what faith is now. It helps develop your life. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. That's the whole key to your life now. 
because he want to see your faith. Faith is acting. Like sometimes if I'm out in Los Angeles having to do some things right now these next few days with a curriculum of teaching students about faith right now, how do we merge faith? Uh, how do we uh, uh, merge faith and entertainment together? Uh, faith is important for the believers to get, okay? So faith is acting. It's literally acting on what you believe from the word of God. You act on what you believe because faith and belief is both different as well now. Belief is, again, I believe my car can crank up, but until I activate the ignition switch, I'm not going nowhere. It's only until I activate that ignition switch, that's when I'm moving. And that's what faith is. Faith is acting, so I'm acting on what I believe. And what I believe, I believe the word of God. I believe the word of God. I was talking to a few of my friends. We've been talking these past couple of days. We're prepared for uh, what the Lord gave me uh, last year. Um, why is this word faith is so important to the body of Christ today? You know, and my word is right now in this season, the subject of faith. Why is it such a, 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 a word today that people really wanted to grab a hold to? Because again, faith again, here we go again, it comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So many people that I've been hearing lately that have been watching or tuning in uh, to our services, you've been very empowered with this faith. Now, this verse six, you hear me say this a lot, but it's very, very uh, a part of my life. Here we go again. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. Listen, for he who comes to God, you know what my word is, on your way making your petitions, you got to know that he's already done it. That's, 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 that's on your way making your petition, you got to know that he's already done it. Okay? You're almost like James chapter 1. Okay, let's go to James chapter 1 and verse number 4. Let's just go back and by verse number 4. I'll go to verse number 2. I'm sorry. Let's just go to verse number 2 and then we'll come on down. Verse number 2. Just verse number 2. But my brother, it's kind of all joy when you fall into various trials. Here we go again. That's where that faith comes in again now. Okay, that's where that faith comes in again. Go to verse 2 one more time. Okay, there we go. My brother, it's kind of all joy when you fall into various trials. Life, your life, your purpose should be built around having faith in God. That's in every area of your life. That's every trial, every situation, anything you're going to encounter. Because this, this is what James is telling us. Kind of all joy when you fall into very uh, different various trials. Listen to what he said in verse number three. He said, for knowing that the testing of your faith. Here we go again. The testing of your faith. Okay, every believer's faith has to be tested. Every believer's faith has to be tried. Okay, so he said the testing of your faith. This is what it does. Produces patience. It produces endurance. It produces the ability to last, okay? That's what it does. It produces endurance, perseverance as well, okay? And so I'm learning that more than anything. I'm learning that more than anything. Some people say, I would have been done gave up. I would have been gave up on that job. I would have been gave up on that marriage. But you had enough God kind of faith in you to go ahead and go through whatever test, whatever trial it was, and now you've seen God bring you to a really finished product in some areas of your personal life. Okay, I heard this uh, last night again because in 20, uh, 21, you know, one of our things is again finishing what we've started. And that takes some time sometimes, you know, because sometimes things come and it blow you or it gets you off track for a minute. But you have to go back to the fact that you have a purpose, you have something that God has given you, an assignment that you got to finish what you've started. I don't like leaving things undone, uncompleted. If I start something, I don't care if it takes six years, seven years. You know, I had to think about it. I think we, 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 we started the ministry in 1996, and we began to believe God by faith that we will be out here in 2004. Now, you got to think about something. We started believing God within the fourth year of our ministry. My faith had to kick in because there was no more room that we could do ministry uh, in the what people call the storefront church, which I thank God for those humble beginnings because those humble beginnings taught me a lot. Those humble beginners taught me a lot. They taught me how to praise God when I didn't have the music. They taught me how to praise God when I didn't have the people. Because when I started, I didn't have what people see today. But again, life built on faith, having faith in God is very, very important. Now, I want to get to a place I feel Father want me to give you. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. Listen to what he says now. But let patience have its perfect work. And that's something the Lord been dealing with me on. Every great leader, whoever you are that are watching, in order to become a great leader, you're going to have to have patience. You're going to have to have patience. You're going to have to have patience. patience. Patience is the key to your success. Patience is very the key to your success in life, okay? Because we can be very, very impatient. But patience is going to be the very key to your success in life. I've learned that over the years. I've learned that more than anything over the years. I've learned that. And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm working on some things here. And, and this, is, this, this is helping me get some things over uh, to the believers because where Father is desiring 
to take many of you all land, you're going to have to know that it's going to be a result of your own faith and patience in his word. Now, let's watch this here because this is, thank you, Holy Spirit, you're amazing, God. Thank you, you're so amazing. You're so amazing. Everybody just say, he's so amazing. He's so amazing. <laughs> he really is. He's so amazing. Hallelujah. This is going to be your key here because some things that Father is going to do for you is going to show you how more important you are to him. You are so important to Father. And by you being so important to Father, he's going to show you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, watch this here. I found it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. There's some things that the Lord had gave me in this area. I want to get this over to someone. There are times vision can be inspired by associations. Many people, you have vision, you have a purpose in life, but many times your vision, or if, even if you did not have a vision, vision can be inspired by association. That's, that's so important to me. And I heard that more than anything, which can mean being around visionaries with visions. You can be so inspired with a vision if you have the right association and in the right room, being taught, hearing the word of faith, your vision, even if you did not have a vision, you can get so inspired. And that, that takes balance too. Now, won't somebody get that over? Now, I just feel the Holy Spirit leading me this way. I know we're not into a class, but we are in a class when I start teaching like this. Okay, so watch this here. There are times when vision can be inspired just by association. Okay, building your vision, especially these young people that have graduated, especially these people that are going into another chapter, another phase of their life, constantly believing God for whatever they're believing God for. Okay, and so a lot of times my vision has been inspired at times I didn't even have a vision because I had to find out about vision personally. Okay, I had to find out about vision. Vision is so important to me. Visions are always birthed out of a burden too. Please get that. And I don't know who this is for. When people tell me they got a vision, well, it's the burden of that vision then because visions are always birthed out of burdens. Okay, it's always birthed out of version. It's a need. It's something. That's why, that's why David said it. When you read in the book of Samuel, he said, is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? So when I start talking about vision for men and women of God right now, building your vision on having faith in God, some of you all got visions. Some of you all have vision. Some of you all really are writing your dreams and your visions out. Okay, you can write that dream out. You can write that thought out or whatever it might be, but you're going to have to begin to execute what you believe God for. You're going to have to put that thing out there and you're going to have to step out on faith in whatever it might be by faith. Okay, watch this here again. Now, this is very, very, very important for me to get this over to somebody. There are times vision again can be inspired and it can be inspired by association. And you have to balance that thing so then you don't begin to covet another man's vision. Because you can want something so bad because of association. And that can really, and I've seen it, that can really cause shipwrecks in lives. Because you was inspired by another's vision. Very, very important now. Holy Spirit spoke to him about 1.30 this morning. And so that's why I had to come back and say, okay, so what, what are you saying again, Pastor Baker? Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 12. Very, very important that you get this in your spirit. Very, very important. We all know, but listen, that, do, that you do not become sluggish. But listen, but imitate those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. Okay? You remember, I've been saying this for years, and this stays with me. When Dr. Frederick Casey Price the probably said, I knew you were going to say that there. Yes, I have to say that. Because this is what the Holy Spirit spoke to me. When Dr. Price told me one time before, it does not diminish who you are when you listen to me. That, that took some real helping develop me in, you know, and other mentors in my personal life that helped shift me to understand about visions. Because my vision got inspired when I was around different individuals. Or I didn't even have a vision, but I saw a burden that was a need and maybe some was, um, was not focusing on need. Because sometimes visions are not vision, they are needs. There's a need for our community here in Brunswick, Georgia. And I can't wait on the system to make it happen. I can't wait on the system to make it happen. I can't wait on a check to come in. But if I act on my faith and believe God, now, I know there's no scripture that you take one step here, take two, but I do find, I found out one thing. Hallelujah. I found out one thing that I can get this over through the word of faith here. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done for you. 
Yes. I found that out. I can't find if you make one step, you make two. But I definitely found that. Listen, Genesis, I mean, uh, John 15 and verse 5. Watch what he says. He lets us know this. And it's very, very important that you get this. I don't know who this is for, but give it to me real quickly. Come on. Give it to me real quickly. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. But without me, you can do nothing. Life built on having faith in God. Want this thing to work? I got to have faith in God. I got to have faith in God. I don't know who this is for. I got to have faith in God. I got to have faith in God. If I'm connected to the vine, if I get disconnected, hallelujah. But if I stay connected, this stayed on me all morning last night. If I just stay connected, I don't want to be disconnected. Hallelujah. That's why I'm believing God even for this virus to fade away so the fear can go away so we can come into the house of God and give God the glory and get divine instructions. Yeah. Glory to God. So we can get divine instructions so we can hear what the Lord is saying. Well, I can hear from him at my home. And that is true. But he said, how can you hear without a preacher? How, how can he preach except he be sent? Listen, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel and bring glad tithings. I need to be inspired by my association. I need to be. I, I told a leader that the other day when we was talking about some things. That's why I had to learn. I had to learn this here. Reagan, I had to learn this here. Listen, okay, watch this here, okay? I gave you that Hebrews 6 and 12. Don't become sluggish, but imitate those who faith and patience inherit the promises. Always remember this here, and you'd have heard me say this, but the Holy Spirit wants me to give it to you again. Never imitate a man's possessions. Imitate his faith. Because you can be in association with people, and you can look at what they have, and you can want it, but you don't know how long they had to pray and wait for it. Hallelujah. You got to understand testings and you got to understand trials. Please make sure you get this. I have heard of the Holy Spirit say, vision need the strength of God. Visions need the strength of God. Hallelujah. Vision need the strength of God. What, what he said, he said, what, he said, if they have to, just, just, just give them John 15, put it there with that one if you have to. But he told me this last night, he said, visions need the strength of God. It needs the power of God. It needs the enabling of God. If not, you'll be by yourself. Building your vision on having faith in God. If I didn't tell you, that's what I'm teaching you this morning. That's what I'm teaching you. Watch it. Building your vision on having faith in God. You got vision, but I know you have vision. I have vision. I have, I have visions. I don't just have one or two visions, but I have to always understand you can't perfect anything until you stick with it. You got to stick with something. That, something that Father's given you, you got to stick with it. You got to see it come all the way. You got to birth this thing. You got to bring this thing to pass. Whatever it is, you have been patient. You saw your son, you saw your daughter go through school. You saw that marriage make it 20 years or 10 years or five years or 50 years like my mom and dad. They're almost in 52 years of marriage right now. Oh no, almost 60 years. What I'm talking about 52, I'm 58 this year. My mom and dad, so I can learn from them that every day wasn't always peaches and cream. Come on, somebody. There was many days that they had to go without so we can hire. Come on, somebody. When you're trying to build your life and you're trying to build your purpose on having faith in God, you're going to have to have patience. You're going to have to have patience. I heard Elder Butler Gill, Genesis 6 and 3 this morning, and I thank God so much for it. I'm believing to live out 120 years. And the Lord said, my spirit shall not strive with man forever, for indeed flesh, for he is indeed flesh. 
yet his days shall be 120 years. I receive it. So I hear Richard Baker coming to me. My grandfather, what's the hurry? I, sometime when I want to endeavor to do something and I hear my grandfather, we were talking about him in my office a moment ago, my dad and I, and I could think about him so many times telling me, what's the hurry? And I'm finding out more than anything, patience. <laughs> patience, it releases you from headaches. Patience, patience gives you peace. That if it happened, it happened. If it don't, it don't. Hallelujah. I tell people all the time, I don't build, hallelujah, by the size of my congregation. I build by the assignment that God has placed on my life. And I have patience because guess what? This is not mine anyway. He's responsible for this. Watch this. Here we go again. Get this. The faith you and I have or I've always had. It is to fulfill his will, either in my life or in someone else's he chooses to use. Now this is, now this is, I'm telling you, this is something that you have to get. The faith I've always had in God is his will to be fulfilled rather through myself or him choosing another to get what he, what he wants done in the earth. That's where, that's where that Luke 16 and 12 came to me as well because I stay on that more than anything. And I know someone receiving this here this morning because where you're about to go in life, you need these kind of scriptures so that you can see when your time come. Watch what he said. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man who will give you what is your own? Oh, he said give them to it. Genesis 12, 1, 2, and 3. I haven't talked about it this year, but I got to give it to you. Watch this year because it's very, very important. Now watch this year. Genesis 12, verse 1, 2, and 3. How God spoke to Abraham. Now the Lord has said to Abraham, listen what he said. Get out of your country from your family and from your father's house. Why? To a land that I will show you. Watch what he said. I'll make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great. And you shall be a blessing. I bless those who bless you. And I'll curse him who curses you. And in you, all the family of the earth shall be blessed. I love that. I love that. I just, I just, I just heard that, that, that Genesis 15 and 6, when it comes down to Abram again. Watch what he says. And even when Abram believed God, and he believed in the Lord, and he accounted it to him for righteousness. Please, everybody get this in your spirit. Nothing happens so we believe. You got to believe in God. You got to believe that God has already brought you through this situation. You got to, you got to believe that God has already, listen, you got to believe that he's already opened up a door for you. You got to believe if he tell you to put a hole on something, put a hole on it, because he got something else in store for you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Just because you thought that that house was going to go through, trust me, I was put down on several houses before he blessed me with mine. Felt disappointed, but he had something better in store. Lord, I need somebody. You better, that's it. You better give God praise right there. Just because one don't close does not mean he ain't got another one he's about to open up for you. You ought to give God praise whoever that is for right there. Hallelujah. Every no is not final. Every no is not final. You got to get turned down. You got to be disappointed. So that when God see your faithfulness and when God see your consistency and when God know that you know with God all things are possible. Glory to God. You need to tell your neighbor, tell your husband or your wife or your children all things are possible. Watch what he says. To him who believe. To him who believe. All things are possible. Let me finish this out here again. There are times vision can be inspired from association, which can mean, again, being around visionaries with vision. And remember, I said this again, never imitate a man's possession. Number two, learn from them and ask questions. If you're around some visionaries, if you're around somebody that you see God use in some type of way, could be your father, could be your mother, could be some mentor, learn from them and ask questions. I don't know how many times, because I knew a thing, 
I still wanted to find out from the older man or the older woman. And if what I knew, they knew. What I knew, they knew, made me feel like I was on the right page. Learn to hush in the room in this season. Learn to value the wisdom of another. I tell this generation, use my wisdom, use my experience, use my influence, and I can use your knowledge and energy. Because we need both of them to get a job done. I might not have the energy you got, but I got some wisdom. Hallelujah. You might not have the influence I got, but you got the knowledge. And if we put wisdom and knowledge together, we can get a work done for the kingdom of God. Oh, we got enough chiefs in the kingdom. We need some Indians, somebody, to shoot some sparrows or shoot some arrows when the enemy come at our way. We're doing a good work and we can't come down now. There's a burden, there's a, there's a need, there's a need for our community. There's a need for the streets that we're walking in. There's a need for Baltimore. There's a need for New York. There's a need for Dallas. There's a need for Philadelphia. There's a need in these streets around here. And we need men and women with vision not to fill their pocketbooks up, but to restore the breaches, to restore the streets, for paths to be the well in. We don't need no more superstars. We need servants in the kingdom of God. That's what we need. 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 We'll never have to go to the system. Hallelujah. That's what we need. That's why they couldn't stop them when they were building that tower to Babylon. Because the Bible said it was all of one man. I woke up this morning and he told me, he said, they was all of one man. Nehemiah and they were building that wall. And it was all one man. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know what's fit to break for you. You keep on believing. You keep on enduring hardship like a good soldier of Jesus Christ. You keep fighting battles. You keep fighting good battles, not no bad battles. Hallelujah, Jesus. Anything that don't bring no, no, no glory to God, leave it where it's at. But if it's going to bring some glory to God, lift your head up, O ye gate. Be ye lifted up, ye everlasting door, and let the king of glory come in. Who is this king of glory? He's the Lord strong and mighty. He's the Lord mighty in battle. Glory to God. Let's lift our heads up in this season. Hallelujah, Jesus. Tired of seeing our young boys dying in the streets. I wish I had 30 people to give God praise. I'm tired of hearing us talking about, oh, every time you look around, it's about money. Don't nobody want your money. We just need the favor of God to do what we got to do in the earth realm. And if you mature enough, you know God don't deal with money. God deals with favor. You say, I give you favor with me and man. He told me that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Oh, I need somebody to give God praise because it's coming down your road. I say it's coming down your road. I say it's coming down your road. You might not have the money for your vision, but if you endure hardness like a good soldier of Jesus Christ, I promise you, as he said in the book of Habakkuk, though your vision tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not tarry. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Can't nobody get over on you when you love doing what you do. For I got a vision I was a supporter. I'm still a supporter. I still push others' vision because I know this is what it took. I don't know who this is for. Build your vision, build your purpose around having faith in God. It's like this computer is a crash. 
and everything that's not a God, it'll crash. But if it's built on a foundation, if it's built on God's word, it'll stand the test of time. God, I wish I had a witness up in here. Sickness and diseases can touch your body. But because your life been built around having faith in God, you will say to that sickness. No unclean thing. No unclean thing dwells in my body. My body! My body! Shout out loud, my body! Below the God! My whole body! My hand! My feet! My mind! Let me stop. That's why you can go to your mama house. That's why you can go to your daddy house and call those things to be not as though they were. Speak healing over your family. Speak deliverance over your family. Speak prosperity over your family. Speak healing over your family. Your life, your purpose has been built on Life. My life and my purpose. Some things I learned not to worry about. I've learned to leave it in the hands of the Lord. Oh, you're better than anybody? No, I ain't no better than anybody. But there's some battles I don't have to fight. He said, You need not to fight in this battle. For this battle don't belong to you, but it belongs to the Lord. Get that sickness over to God. Get that child over to God. Get them grandchildren over to God. Give your husband over to God. Why you say that, Pastor Baker? Because my life is built on having faith in God. Three hundred and sixty-five days a year. 365 days a year. Not in the system. The system always fails you. But Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But Jesus. He never fail. Never fail. He never fail. He never, never, never fail. Friends may come. Friends may go. Loved ones may leave you. But he said, I'll never leave you. Neither will I forsake you. No, I'll be with you. Always. Even to the end of this world. When my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord. Let me leave us alone. Let me leave us alone. He said, I was wounded for your transgression. You better put your name there. He was wounded for my transgression. He was bruised for my iniquity. And the chastisement of my peace was upon him. And by his strife, you better praise him for your healing. Don't praise him for the healing. Praise him for the miracle. Tell your neighbor, say, whatever you 
got to do. Hold fast to your confession. Whatever you got to do, don't let go. Cling to your faith. Grab hold of your faith. Hold it tight. Don't let it go. God got great things in store for you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No touch. But since I'm here, I might as well praise him. Since I'm here, I might as well give my testimony. Since I'm here, I heard the saints say, Whosoever call on the name of the Lord, not might be saved, not hope to be saved, but they shall be saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm saved. I'm real. Tell somebody say there's nothing. Tell them again say there's nothing. Your child. Your son, your daughter, your bill, there is nothing too hard for God. Hey, 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 hey. Somebody prayed it for where you at. Did nobody think you would be here? Did nobody think you were gonna make it? They thought you were gonna die. But Jesus looked at you like Lazarus. Show me where they at. Show me where Mark at. Show me in the crack house. Show me around the tree. Just show me where she at. And when Jesus found you, he cried out, come forth, lose him, lose him, whatever had you tied, lose him, whatever had you bound, lose him, whatever had you tender, lose him, lose him, sickness, lose him. Need the strength of God. Look, 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 look at man, look at child, look at husband, look, 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 look.
you'll never have to make something happen if you have faith in God. Roof, I tell people, is not, is not bragging. 25 years, never feeling the weight of a ministry. Because I had to, tell you, I had to build my life and my purpose around having faith. All of a sudden, I had, to, I had to build my life. I had to build my life, Mother Gray, and my purpose around having. What that? I feel that anointing. Lift that hand. I feel, I feel that. That's an anointing now. got faith in God in your purpose in the vision he gave you for your family I've seen it you build your life and your purpose on having faith in God I don't care what you see at what you see. God, I know this could be the testing of my faith. He told me when I heard him say that to me for the yesterday morning. I'm closing because there's so much I want to share with you about. Vision is not just starting a business up and starting a ministry. Vision is beyond that. I just said it this morning. This was never a desire. It was a conviction. Still to this day I have, still is every time I leave that seat, I leave that seat. I'm as nervous as I don't know what. The thousands that could be watching it. And, and, and go back and watch. I didn't know until a few days ago, I was speaking to almost 30,000 people in Dallas, Texas for Bishop James. And the whole time, I was up. Because I said, God, you know you can choose anybody else for this. This, this. this is what he told me. He said, he said tell them, he said, learn from them, from your associates, from your visionary, from your mentors. He said, learn to serve, serve, serve. When do you stop serving? You never stop serving. Jesus said, I did not come to be served. I came to serve. I came to serve. I told the Lord that just a few days. I just want to serve. I just want to serve. Then he said, tell them, learn. It's not about you. It's about you and I fulfilling his desire in the earth. I had to learn that I'm still learning that it's not about me. Because again, apart from him, I can do nothing. Whatever you're dealing with, whatever you believe in God for, whatever you're in faith for right now, it's already done. Lift your hands. I learned this over the years. I think we just quoted like this in, in the book of Ecclesiastes. God has made all things beautiful in his time. Mother Jadon, I think we talked about that years ago. He's made all things beautiful. What's the matter? In his time. 
in that same book of Ecclesiastes, he said, there's a time and a season. You'll be so patient if you just wait on his time. You have less headaches. You have less problems when you wait on his time. If I don't say nothing to see you this morning again, you need the strength of God for your vision. You need the strength of God. You need Habakkuk 2 and 4. He says, Isaiah, he says, Behold, the proud, his soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Not mama's faith. Not daddy's faith. Not the pastor's faith. Because when the tests and trials come, When the tests and the trials come, when the rejections come, when the persecutions come, when the loss of loved ones come, you are going to have to have faith in God. You're going to have to have faith that I know you're going to get us through this one. If there's a discipline for someone this morning, lift your hand. You're going to get us through this one. Though trials come on every hand, I still feel like going on. Yeah. Lift those hands if you have. I don't know who you are. Though trials may come.
got too much to do. You got to see them children go through school. You got to see them grandchildren make it. You got to see your daughter come through. You got to see your husband come through. No matter what it is. I can get so impatient, son, and I can say to the Lord, Lord, you know we've been talking about this here for years. When it's going to take place? And he said, you'll know when it takes place. When the burden is light. For you to do what you have to do, but for now, the burden that I need you to do is something that I need to get done. And I need it to get done in the earth. I need you. I need your prayers. I need your consistence. I need you staying in your word. And I need you to understand that just because you're not doing as much, you feel you're not effective. You are. You're just in a season of your life of being grateful. When things are not going like you probably want them to in this season, that might be a season that Father is telling you, be grateful for where you are. And when you are grateful, I will release creativity in you. I will release things in you. Like I used to say when I was on G Street in the old storefront church, I used to say it like this here. As Charlie Brown, I love to think of things that never was. And I just say, why not? I don't like to be a duplicate of no one else's visions. Now, when we, when we first started building, I heard the Lord say, when I was about to buy a church, they had already gave me the check, $700,000. The lady pushed the check across the table, and she said, Mark, you're busting out the seams, and you need to go ahead and get this building while it's, it's open, it's available for you. I know we'll forget I told Christine, and I was going to get it, and I heard the Holy Spirit say, but I told you to build while I was sitting in the bank. I said, well, Father, it's going to take a long time to build. We're busting out the seams on G Street. We're busting out the same. We're having night services. We're having Sunday morning services. And I heard the Holy Ghost told me, he said, I did not raise you up to inherit another man's problems. He said, in everything you do, you're going to release the old to make room for the new. That's when I was on in a New Year's Eve service on the island. And I heard the Lord say, Release the old to make room for the new. I said, but it's going to take some time. Rome wasn't built overnight, he said. Hallelujah. And I know it's going to take you some time, but if you have the patience that I want to develop in you, you will see it come to pass. Whether you, you want to have a patience to wait on a deliverance to come or do you want to be delivered he said I want to be delivered and he said sometimes people go through sicknesses and he said sometimes they have to go through them for a long time he said do you want to have that kind of patience for that 
Or do you want to have patience to wait for me to build your visions? I said, I'd rather have that kind of patience. I'd rather have that kind of patience. And I don't know who you are this morning, but Holy Spirit is telling me to tell you, just keep that faith. And be patient. Because God is not going to bring you through it. He's already brought you through it. He's already answered that prayer. He's already answered that prayer. He's already did it. Ruth, that's already done. I've learned, Mother Sutton, in these 14 months going on with this building project, building this building, he said, now you done been patient almost seven years. Just put it in cruise. Come on, somebody. The Lord told me to tell somebody, just don't match the gas no more. Just keep it in cruise. 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 You don't have your hand on the wheel too long. Take them off. Let me drive you on in. Let me drive you on in. Let me take you on in. I remember every time we used to go to Cochran, Georgia when I was a little boy, going up to Cochran, and hallelujah, my dad and them be done drove about two and a half, three hours to get to Cochran. And when we see that bridge and see that Miller, Georgia College on the right side, daddy stopped mashing the gas. He go across that bridge and we cruise on into Cochran. And we just go through the town. Hallelujah. God told me to tell you almost to your destination. You don't need to match the gas no more. Just cruise on in. Just, just, just lift your lift your foot off the pedal. You all made it. You made it. You made it. Somebody better lift their hand. You made it. You made it. You survived when others. You, 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 you got that degree. You, you. You did some things in your life. You, you've accomplished some things in your life. You've accomplished some things in life. You got that boy through school. You got that girl through school. That's enough to, to, to ease off the brake right now. Ease off the gas right now. And cruise on in. Glory to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm learning it. Some things I don't even have to pray for no more with my children. I had the gas. I was mashing the gas. But now I done seen God fulfill his word. I lift my feet off of the gas pedal. And I let them cruise on with their life because, hallelujah, there was times I had to match the gas to aim it, do right. Sometimes I had to go over the speed limit. Hallelujah. But I thank God we don't have the system we got today. All them children have been on call the police. Come on, somebody. All them children been done called the police. Hallelujah. Glory to God. All of them. Thank you, Jesus. I'm glad y'all raising y'all now. I got mine out the way. Because God knows they would have been called the police on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My mom and daddy, they were... You know, I was the only boy, so I think I got by with a lot, so they didn't have to do to me as much as I had to do to my children. Hallelujah. But when you got as many as I have, and they back to back, you keep your foot on the gas. And my God, hallelujah. I'm telling you, they would have been pulled me over. You know how the speed limit say 45? You doing 65. That's how it would have been with me. I done went over the speed limit. But I thank God for what the Lord has made out of their lives. I thank God for what the Lord has made out of your life. Hallelujah. And you ought to lift your hand and give God glory because now, now, now you can see taking care of your loved ones and taking care of your family members. You can see the benefits from God. 
We give you glory, God. We give you honor. We give you praise. Thank you. You say, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy later. You say, I give you rest. You say, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy. My way of doing is right. And my burdens is light. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. If you don't know Jesus Christ today as Lord and Savior of your life, if you've never accepted him into your life, this is a great time. This is a great day that you can ask the Lord to come into your life. And all you have to do is open up your mouth and confess with me on today. Lord Jesus, come into my life. I repent for all of my sins ones that I know of and the ones that I do not know of. This day, Lord, I want to commit my life to you. And if you will save me this day, your word declare, whosoever call upon the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. And all you have to do is call that name Jesus not be in a church today, but if you just call that name Jesus, you might be watching me from a hospital room today. You might be watching me from a rest area on the side of the road. You might be watching in a nursing home. You might be watching right at your home. I know you are. And you're not saved. Get your sister. Get your brother. Even if they're not saved. And today, ask them to accept Jesus Christ. Savior of their life. If you confess that with me today, I personally, as I always say, I welcome you to the family of God. I welcome you. I don't have to see you to believe it. I get the testimonies. I get the testimonies. I get family members. They send me texts. They send me emails to let me know this just took place for a family member of mine. I thank many of you for even sharing these broadcasts with other people to watch and to hear the word of faith that comes to this this, this area of Brunswick, George. We love you. We thank God for you and we thank you for the prayers that you have given and you give to this ministry. Now let's worship the Lord with one of the greatest gifts he's given us and that is a gift to give. That's a gift to give. That's a gift to give. That's, that's one of the greatest gifts a person can have. And that is to be able to give. That's, that's a gift. That's, a, that's, that's not about someone forcing me. I told you someone this week, we were talking so strong about it. I just love to give. I just love to give because I know that that is one of the greatest gifts. There was a once upon a time in my life I couldn't give. I couldn't give. Not even just talking about the tithe. I couldn't, I couldn't see myself even doing it. But then when God took me from the tithe, somebody just, I just heard you say it. I want a tithe. I want a tithe, Pastor Baker. Yes. That's a, that's, that's a great tool for you. That's what, how do you tithe? You give a 10% of what God has given you. If he bless you to make $700 this week, you give him $70. That's 10%. You give him an offering freely from your heart and if you sow this out like many of us we sow seeds because why he's blessed our life he's blessed our life Genesis 26 verse number 12 Bible says Isaac sowed in the famine and he reaped in the same year a hundredfold I've learned that the principles of giving I've watched it throughout my whole life since I've been a believer especially through these 25 years I've watched God. I've watched God. I've watched God. I, have, I haven't had to do anything else. I think Minister Slate said a few days ago to me. And it's so true. He said, if you do anything else outside of what I call you to do, this would turn to a curse. I, I can't do nothing else. I don't want to do nothing else. I want to be obedient to this, what he called me to do. Because if I stay faithful to this here, he will not only just bless me financially and and things, he give me the divine health that I so desire to have. 
Come on, anybody else beside me? Whether I get the business or not, I'm walking in divine hell. Come on, somebody, whether I get the apartments and the houses or not, I'm walking in divine hell. I got peace. I got peace that's a past all understanding. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And guess what? He's made my responsibilities very light. And that's a good place to be in. Whatever those responsibilities are, what are those things that you are accountable to? Watch God make those things light for you. Woo! I give him glory. We don't even discuss other things, but understanding how Father so desire for us to honor him when we give. So obey God today. And I don't have to say this to greater work. You've been such a blessing. You've been such a blessing to this ministry. Going almost, almost literally 14 more months here. This ministry, oh my God, I, I can't help but tell God thank you. This, I know this here, this just don't happen. This just don't happen. People have not even been in this church in over a year. You're still consistent in your time. You're still consistent in your offerings. And I, I praise God for you. I thank God because why? I don't do it because of Pastor Baker. I don't do it because of Greater Works Ministry. I tithe. I give my offerings because of the love of God that I have. And I know it is him who give me power to get wealth. I know it's him who give me this anointing, this ability to see that his gospel, his word of faith, go through the breath of this man in the highest. Now, Lord, we thank you. I thank you. Our faith, we build our life. We build our life and our purpose around tithing. We build our life and our purpose around giving. Why? Because we have faith in you. We have faith in you that you are the giver of life. We have faith in you that God, because of our obedience to you, and it takes the Holy Spirit, not knowledge, not the information that you probably received from someone. It takes a relationship with Father that I love the Lord so much that I always, always be a supporter of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Somebody's releasing some faith today. I felt that to say right there. Somebody is releasing some faith today. Somebody is releasing some faith today. Somebody, I don't know who it is, but the Holy Ghost told me to tell you, he's already bearing witness with me that you are releasing some faith today. Oh, yeah, I know when I feel the Holy Ghost. Say something. Release that faith by. Release it, release it, and watch God. You get all the glory, you get all the honor, you get all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. If you already mailed your offers in, that you was tied into that faith there. If you've already did it by electronic, you've already tied in faith with us. So we give God praise, we give God glory, and we give God honor for you. And my word is, like my grandboy would say, God has great things in store for you. Give the Lord a praise. God bless you. We'll see you next week on Wednesday. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining us. We pray you were blessed by the service today. Remember to follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel where you can view a library of our past messages to feed your faith. If you would like for us to pray for you, visit us at greaterworksfamily.com where you can send us your prayer request. Remember to tune in Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and Sundays at 9.30 a.m. Have a great day. Remember, God has great things in store for you. God bless you.